When we write that the square root of a is equal to b, this means the same exact thing as saying that a is equal to b squared. So, for example, you know the square root of 0 is 0, and that's precisely for the same reason that 0 is equal to 0 times 0. Square root of 1 is 1 because 1 is equal to 1 times 1, or 1 squared. The square root of 4 is 2 because 4 is 2 squared. The square root of 9 is 3 because 9 is 3 squared. The square root of 16 is 4 because 16 is 4 squared. And we could go on and on. There's um, other interesting ramifications of this. Most people are probably more familiar with this form rather than that form. If we start off saying, well, what if we wrote this as the square root of c equals the square root of c? That certainly must be true. What's the exponential form of this radical expression? Well, over here, b is the square root of c. So instead of b, we have the square root of c. So b squared is the square root of c squared. On the other hand, a is equal to c, because the square root of a squared of c, a is the same as c, so a is the same as c. Ah, so, what's interesting here is that this isn't quite as obvious as that. Um, but, indeed, this is why the square root of c times the square root of c always equals c. And it's simply, in radical form, that's simply saying that the square root of c is equal to the square root of c. It's interesting that those two statements are equivalent. Since this is definitely true, this is also definitely true. Another interesting thing to look at here is, what if we wrote c squared is equal to c squared? something that is clearly true, obviously true, what does it look like in the land of radicals over here, in the, in the square roots? And this, this time we're following this pattern in orange up here. So a is equal to c squared. So the square root of a is the square root of c squared. And here, here what we have is... Uh, b is equal to c because b squared and c squared. You know, so b is now being played, the role of b is being played by c. So instead of the square root of c, ah, so instead of, <laughs> b is equal to c. So instead of b we could write c here. And we get another interesting and not at first obvious uh, property of square roots. So, Anyway, with practice, this will become as obvious as that, as well, this will become as obvious as that. But they're both, uh, again, if this is true, this must be true, just as if this is true, this must be true. So those are some of the interesting properties. Another property that I'd like to show at this time, using these properties, We'd like to show that the square, what the square root of a times b, that it can always be written as the square root of a times the square root of b. So let's say this is, let's cast this into the role of the square root of a equals b. So in this case, what is a? a is the thing under the square root. What's under the square root here is capital A times B, capital B. So that's the A equals, because it's the stuff under the square root. The stuff under the square root is this, AB. On the other side, we, whatever is on the other side is B, so this radical A times radical B is equal to B. So now the B is squared, so it's radical A times radical B to the quantity squared. Now, let's see what th this is true. Um, this is going to be radical A times radical A. That's radical A squared times radical B squared using the property of just squaring the product of two things. It's each factor in the product squared, the product of that. And the square root of A squared is right here. 
square root of a squared would be a, as the square root of b squared would be b. So, in other words, if ab is equal to ab, if a times b is equal to a times b, then it must also be equally true, well this is obviously true for all a's and b's, then it's also true that the square root of AB is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. So there's uh, some very important properties of square roots, and we'll see of radicals in general.